Welcome to this session in which we're going to be talking about future changes to UK GAAP. We don't have any firm proposals yet from the FRC. This is really very early stage stuff. The FRC have simply sent out a call to get feedback on the application of UK GAAP. At the moment, we don't have any proposals from them. There is no discussion paper for us to talk about at this stage. But you know, it really doesn't seem that long ago that we were looking at the last amendment to UK GAP. Indeed, it was only periods commencing 1st of January 2019 that we had the triannual review. The periodic review, as they now call it, is set to kick in for periods commencing 1st of January 2024. For fairly obvious reasons, it's not going to be called the triannual review. Although, to be fair, the last triennial review happened after four years. Work that one out for yourself. The issue is that the FRC have you know, grown to understand that they simply can't change the standard every three years. This was their initial plan. But when it came to implementing it, what they found is that they were asking for feedback on an application of a standard that no one had yet adopted. Because, of course, they have to publish it a good year or so in advance of the application date so that people can get their software up to date. So it's been decided that the triannual review simply isn't going to work and they're going to have to move to a periodic review every four or five years. This time it's five years and I wouldn't be surprised if they stick with that. But I suspect, you know, talking about changes for peri periods commencing 1st of January 2029 is a bit far in the future for most people. Now, the changes, you know, kicking in for periods commencing 1st of January 2024, you know, do seem a long way away and speculating on what those might be might not seem a very good use of our time. However, I, I'm not one of these sort of it's never too early to start preparing kind of guys. But I do see some wisdom in having some sort of medium range forecast on what we're going to be seeing in UK Gap, because there are some rather exciting developments that could be biting them. Now, at this stage of the consultation, as I said a couple of times, we, we don't have a document to review. We don't have any proposals from the FRC. They've simply sent out a call for constructive feedback. Well, that's what they've asked for. I won't read my slide here to you. But what they're looking for is any feedback on issues you know, with the existing standard and framework where they can improve it. What they say is, if they're not aware, made aware of any problems, then they're just going to assume that everything thing is fine. I wouldn't have imagined that we're going to get lots of changes of this nature. One would hope that most of the uh, problems from the initial application of FRS 102 were shaken down in 2019. Indeed, it was a, a pretty good revision of the standard in 2019 and did address a lot of everybody's concerns. So again, you wouldn't expect a, a big shakedown again in 2024. However, I think there are some bigger fish to fry on this. And that is all about IFRS. Of course, FRS 102 is a convergent standard. Well, in principle, it's designed to be a convergent standard. It doesn't, I mean, it certainly doesn't take on all the presentation and disclosure requirements of IFRS. And there are some you know, significant uh, divergences in terms of recognition and measurement in terms of the standard. But we do have some new standards. So this means that the FRC are going to have to think about how they address them. So since the last triannual review, we've got IFRS 9, IFRS 15 and IFRS 16 to be considered. Yet yeah, I know that two of those standards were implemented before the triennial review, but the UK FRC has a policy that they'd like to see IFRS adopted for at least a couple of reporting cycles before they consider whether to you know, take on those treatments. Now, IFRS 9 on financial instruments, this is all about the expected loss model. At the moment, in FRS 102, when you're looking at the impairment of financial assets, you, you, know, you take into account the circumstances that you're aware of, aware of at the year end when you think about their impairment. The expected loss model is different from that. 
the expected loss model thinks about you know, the risk, the quality of the asset, and the lower quality the asset is, the further into the future you look until you have you know, very poor quality assets and you look forward into the future over the whole of the, the life of the asset to settlement to think about what could happen that would result in an impairment. Long story short, it's a bit more complicated and you tend to get bigger impairments for your assets. So it'll be interesting to see whether the FRC want to take on that model within FRS 102. Again, we've got no indication of whether they do or not yet. IFRS 15 is a little bit of an oddball standard. In my view, something of a hybrid because it was written with the Americans and you might be aware in in America, they do like rules. And of course, IFRS is about principles. So IFRS 15 gives you both in spades. You've got lots of principles, but then lots of rules about how they're applied. IFRS 15 does sometimes give you, in my view, slightly odd revenue recognition policies. Um, and uh, it, it takes you to strange places just sometimes. But that's not really the really big issue with FRS 102. The big issue with FRS 102 is that FRS 102 is so simple and so brief. And IFRS 15 is so complicated and so long. And it's going to be interesting to see how the FRC struggle with that one. Would they really want to bring in all the rules? You know, can they just bring in the principles? Well, we will see. But I think both IFRS 9 and IFRS 15 in this are rather overshadowed by IFRS 16 on leasing for a couple of reasons. IFRS 16 on on leasing has got a a pretty radical accounting treatment. All leases go on balance sheet. Well, all except those that are really quite short or really, really low in value. So, you know, radical difference that you have all these assets on balance sheet and liabilities on balance sheet that previously you didn't. Plus, of course, the other issue with with leasing is is everybody's got them. You know, the the impairment of financial assets by comparison is a a, a bit of a you know a, a fringe subject. Whereas everyone's got a lease. You know, if you've got a company that rents their main trading premises on a two, three, four, five year lease, of course, those those assets and liabilities aren't on balance sheet now. But under IFRS sixteen, they would be. So. Very interesting decision the FRC have got on IFRS 16 when they come to think about the extent to which they're going to you know, incorporate those principles into FRS 102. I mean, I think there are similar interesting issues with IFRS 9 and 15, but IFRS 16 is the one that will have the big impact. At this stage of the consultation, the FRC aren't giving anything away, and it could be some time before we get any you know, really good feedback on what they're thinking in terms of you know, IFRS alignment on these three important standards. Another factor might be IFRS for SMEs. You might recall that FRS 102 is you know, pretty closely based on IFRS for SMEs. Lots of differences, but structurally it's the same. And you know, it, that is where FRS 102 ultimately came from. So how the International Accounting Standards Board deal with IFRS 9, 15 and 16 within IFRS for SMEs could be a factor in the FRC's decision. Not necessarily, but it could be. So it might be some time before I'm recording one of these sessions and letting you know what the FRC is going to do. I have a feeling they're more likely to converge, at least to an extent, than to allow divergence to occur. But we will see whether I'm right when I get to get to read the you know, first consultation from the FRC on this, where they start you know, telling us what they plan to do. And obviously, I record the session for you to let you know. But until then, thank you for listening.